Hi, today I'm going to show you how I built a Pensy Signal Cabin by Altoona Model Works. This is an O scale kit of a Pennsylvania Railroad signal tower made of resin, hydrocal, and laser cut wood. But first, the reason that I'm building it. I have a friend with a large O scale Pennsylvania Railroad layout, and he needed a model of Huntington Tower on his layout. There's no kit available for this, but he felt that this Altoona Model Works kit would be a good stand-in. So I'll show you how I built it for his layout. It's a very impressive kit with the walls and part of the roof cast in resin, the base made of hydrocal, and the windows and other parts made in laser cut wood. You can see that there's quite a bit that comes in this kit. The first thing that I noticed that even though it was very carefully packed, my hydrocal steps had broken. But they were easily fixed and I would be able to hide any seams or gaps when I was building it and weathering them. So with that done, it was time to start with the walls. I taped them together just to get an impression of what the building was going to look like. But one thing I noticed was the resin cast walls had a little bit of a bend to them. This is not unusual with resin pieces sometimes if they've been sitting for a while and exposed to different temperatures. I contacted the company to see what their recommended procedure was for flattening the walls and they recommended using a hair dryer or a heat gun and some weights. So I used this method and it worked very well. It took a little while but using a piece of glass and my hair dryer I was able to get them flat. So my next step was to give them a good bath in soapy water and get off any residue and then let them dry and I marked the walls to make sure I wouldn't get them mixed up. I first started by priming the walls, covering the glue spots and my writing on the walls, and using a resin primer. Once I was finished with that, I let them dry and made sure that the primer hadn't filled any of the intricate details in the resin walls. Then I started to paint my interior walls. We had picked a green and I just used brushes for painting this. I had all the interior walls done and then realized I didn't need to have masked over the gluing areas because I was going to be sanding them as it turns out. I used my ultimation sander to make sure I had a perfect 45 degree angle on all of the areas where the walls would meet. And then I used a strong epoxy to glue the walls together. I made sure that all of the corners were meeting just right and that I had a perfect 90 degree angle on all the walls. And I made sure that they were tightly clamped and held in position as the glue was setting up. There was no going back at this point and how they were glued together was going to determine how the building looked. So I made sure I had my perfect 90 degree angle. And then I did the same with the second set of walls. And Once I was done I had two sets of walls that were both at a perfect 90 degree angle and ready to be married together. I was pretty happy with how the two sets of walls were going to meet. And I started doing a little bit of puttying on the inside walls, unsure of how well they were going to be seen once it was put together. Once I started test fitting the floor that came with it into the slots, I noticed that the two sets of walls didn't quite come together perfectly. I found that the floor was actually keeping them from closing together. So what I ended up having to do was just cut a very thin strip off of two sides of the floor. This worked 
and I also put a little bit of bracing underneath the floor. Then it was time to start marrying the two sides together. Again I used a strong epoxy for this and made sure that they were clamped and braced so that everything was held together as the epoxy was drying. After letting this sit overnight I ended up with a very strong structure with all four walls aligned. And then I just had to add a little more putty to the inside where I had a couple small gaps. And then on the outside where the brick course goes around you have to add a little putty to make the corners stick out. And then once it's dry you shape this to look like bricks. And next up was the bay window. As they came the bevel on them didn't come all the way to the edge. So I also used my ultimation sander to get a perfect 45 degree angle on all of the corners of the bay window. This took a little bit of going back and forth. Because of the trim on the bay window I had to make sure that where they met at the corner was not only going to be a perfect alignment but also had the same gap between the corner and the trim on the front and the side of the windows. But once I had all of the bevels sanded, I put the pieces together just to see how they looked. And at that point I started using epoxy to glue them together as well. And I braced them and held them in place while the epoxy was drying. And once the bay window was all glued together, it also had trim work that had to be extended around the corner. For this I use very tiny pieces of strip wood that I cut and glued in place and then used putty to blend them in along with a little bit of carving to make sure they match the trim detail that was on the bay window. The kit came with a piece of plastic as a floor for the bay window but I didn't like it so I decided to make my own flooring for it out of some siding. I put strip wood in place that would hold the siding there to act as a floor. And then it was time for final sanding to prepare it for paint. I first started working on finding the appropriate color for the brick paint that would match the Huntington Tower that we were trying to model. I tried a couple different colors on a piece of hydrocal brick that came with the kit and found that one that we settled on. Then it was time to prepare the pieces for painting. I masked the inside and the floor of the main building. And we had picked an AK Saddle Brown to be the main color of the brick. So I put on a couple light coats allowing it to dry in between. And I wanted to make sure I had full coverage but didn't want it heavy enough that it was going to hide any of the detail in these resin walls. And it was covering it quite well. Next was to work on the bay window. I did the final painting on the inside of it and then did a little more sanding on the trim pieces that I had put on the corners. I gave it another coat of primer and then had to do a little more sanding to make sure they blended in. But once I was happy with how they matched the trim, I gave it a last coat of primer and then started to put the base coat on it. And after applying the base coat to it, the inserts and some of the trim will be brush painted. But I had to make sure that the paint covering the trim on the corners made it look like they were all one piece of the trim going across the wall. And it came out pretty good. So now it was time to go in and add the colors inside the trim. For this I used a Vallejo paint 
and use some Liquitex Flow Aid to help it flow into all of the panels. And it worked pretty well. It allowed the paint to settle down and level out quite nicely. Next up I did more work on the floor that was going to go inside the bay window. I cut out a piece to fit that was going to extend all the way inside to the main building and a couple pieces of wood that would end up being floor joists underneath it when it was put in place. And at this point I had removed all of the masking tape from inside the building and was getting ready to apply the mortar to the brick. Now I have a couple different methods for applying mortar in laser cut brick or plastic cast brick, but I wanted to try it for the resin walls and see which worked better. I tested a lightweight spackling compound and a distress crayon and applied them both to my sample piece and then let them dry to see which I look like better. The distress can came out better on these mortar lines. Then it was a matter of picking which color to use to model the mortar. And after I had tried three colors, we found none that we liked the best. And that's what we used. So I put a coat of dull coat over the brick and then started to apply the stress crayon into the mortar lines. The dull coat keeps any of the paint from rubbing off after you apply the distress crayon and start to wipe it off with a rag. If you want more information on how to use these distress crayons for mortar, I have a couple of how-to videos of how I use them on my YouTube channel. The process is very simple of just applying the distress crayon onto the wall and then using a wet brush to get most of it off of the brick surface and then wiping it until all that's left is inside the mortar lines. So I just continued this process until I had finished all four sides. It's doing something like this where you realize how big an O-scale building can actually be. At this point, I was done with the building and ready to move on to other parts of the kit. Next was the chimney, which was also a piece of cast resin and had the same brick detail. So I went ahead and put the resin primer on it and prepared to paint it. I also started working with the hydrocal base and steps. They were going to be concrete. I went ahead and primed them using a heavy gray primer. I knew I was going to have to fill a few little casting holes in them. So I put my first coat on and then started sanding them to see where I needed to work on them. Both the base and the stairs had some casting holes in them. So I ended up filling them with some putty. And then once I was done with that, I sanded it smooth and got ready to put another coat of primer on it. And once I had put the primer on, I then went ahead and put a final coat on. For this I used a camouflage khaki which comes out looking quite a bit like concrete. I now went back to the chimney and painted it the same brick color that I had painted the building. And then I applied the mortar using its stress crayon the same way I had with the building. At this point it was time to turn my attention to the laser cut windows and door. And we were using the same brown 
that we'd used as a trim detail on the bay window. And I applied it using a sponge. For the windows themselves and for the door, I'd be using a red acrylic paint. And again, I used a sponge to apply this. Then after adding a piece of hardware to the door, I started to install the glazing and the window trim into the bay window. These pieces all fit very nicely and it went together well. I used pressure sensitive adhesive to make sure I wouldn't get any glue oozing out anywhere. Then as I was test fitting the bay window onto the building, I realized I had to paint the wall where the bay window hung out from the matching interior green. Next it was time to work on the window frame for the base. Since it's hydrocal casting, the instructions just said to paint the inside a flat black and then put the frame in place. These are the, just the basement openings without any glazing in them. So I went ahead and did that. Now it was time to start adding the glazing and the window frames to the main building. Again, I used a pressure sensitive adhesive to hold all them in place and that way you don't get any glue squirting out anywhere. And now it came time to attach the bay window to the wall. For this I was again going to use my epoxy as I wanted something that would really hold it well. I used one, two, three blocks to help align and to help hold it in place while the epoxy was setting up. And at this point, I stained the flooring on the second floor of the building and also stained and glued in place my piece of flooring for the bay window. Next it was time to start on the roofing. The base of the roof was another piece of resin casting which had also warped while it had been in storage. But this time I used a different technique to flatten it out I put the piece of resin into a casserole dish and poured boiling water in and then put another weight with more boiling water on top of it. And by the time the water had cooled, the resin piece had completely flattened out. This method was much faster than using the hair dryer and weights. Now I turned back to finish up a couple details on the main building. I put some joists underneath the flooring that I put in the bay window and then started working on the chimney cap. It was made up of two pieces of laser cut plastic that got glued together and then get put on top of the chimney. Next I started working on the porch roof supports. They were made up of some timbers and some paneling that goes inside them. I made a couple little braces to glue the inserts to. Glued the braces in place and then after painting the inserts I attached them to the bracing in back. Once those were dry I prepared to glue them in place making sure that they were centered and both equally straight and at the same height. Once they were in place, I started applying the shingles to the porch roof. First I painted both sides of the porch roofing and then used white glue to apply the shingles to it. Once I let that dry, then I put glue on both of the supports and glued the porch roof in place and let it dry. Now it was time to make some shades 
to go inside all those windows. I cut the pieces of shade material to size and then used pressure sensitive adhesive to hold them in place. Next up I primed and then painted the chimney cap in preparation for gluing it onto the chimney. Now it was time to start back on the roof. The first thing I did was prime and then paint the resin roof base. And this got a brown on both sides to match the trim. Then it was time to start on the actual roof structure. And this was a very well engineered piece. You start by holding the base down flat so that it won't move while you glue in the two main cross uprights. They slot into each other and get glued into the base. And you have to make sure that they're perpendicular. The next supports have to get two 45 degree angles sanded into the back edge of them as they'll go into the corners of the cross uprights. And using the ultimation sander for this made it really easy work. And you can see how these uprights go into the main uprights and they get glued in place as well. And by sanding the back edge so that they're a perfect fit into those uprights, you get a perfect glue joint. And it makes for a very strong structure that's going to hold up this roof. We then move on to the roof decking. And once this is cut out, the bottom edge of all of these pieces needs to be sanded at the angle that the uprights of the bracing is. So I took that angle with my angle gauge and set that up in my sander. And then I was able to sand the bottom edge at the correct angle so it would sit flush on the base. And then the process for gluing these down was to use wood glue on the structure supports and then come back and use super glue with an accelerator on the corners just to make sure everything is held down tight. And I went around the entire roof structure repeating this process until all the pieces were glued and attached to each other. The next step is for the subroof that goes over the bay window. And this had to be sanded the same way and glued in place. And then there are two little filler strips that go in this opening gap. And they have to have a bevel sanded into them so that they sit flush. Once they're done and glued in place, you have all of the assembly of the roof structure done. But I wasn't finished working on it yet because all of these corners and edges had to line up and match up with each other. So my next step was to put the initial coat of paint on it and then check the fit onto the base of the roof and onto the structure. And I found a few spots where I had to either add some putty or do a little extra sanding to get a perfect finish. The reason for this was this lower edge was actually going to show underneath the shingles. And while it wouldn't be obvious, you did want it to look like a finished surface. And I did this until it was perfectly smooth. I was now ready to start applying the shingles. I did an overspray of black and then a second overspray of a brown and a gray onto their shingles. And all of these were light coatings that just added to the texture. 
And then, even though they were an adhesive paper, they suggested using a contact cement underneath them. So I did one side at a time, covering it with a rubber cement and then attaching the shingles. They had lines laser cut into all the roof decking to show you where to put them. And they were all cut to size. And with very few exceptions, they fit perfectly. And they had marked on the decking where the chimney was going to go. So you cut out the shingles over that spot. And then it was time to add the shingles to the roofing over the bay window. And this was done the same as the regular roofing. Then you had to apply the shingles on the edges that led out to it. And they had separate pieces to cover the ridges where you would score and fold them in half and then apply them where the edges of the roofing met. And I used some pressure sensitive adhesive to help hold these in place. And once I had all four of those glued in place, I just snipped the ends so that they would meet up with the edge of the roof. And then it was time to put the same ridges on the bump out over the bay window. And I attached those the same way. Now, even though this structure wasn't going to have an interior, I couldn't live with that hole in the floor without doing something. So I got some grant line steps and railing that I was going to put under it and around it. I painted the stairs first. And then, even though I have jigs for assembling stairs, all of them are HO scale. So I had to make a jig to assemble these O-scale stairs. But once I was done with that, they went together easily enough. Once I was finished with them, for some reason, I still went ahead and weathered them as I would anything that's easily seen. And I realized that no one would see them where they were going to be located. So I went ahead and started mounting them inside the building, going up through the hole in the floor. There was a window opposite them. So looking in that window, I wanted there to be the impression of stairway. And I went ahead and added a railing on it. I don't know how easily they'll be able to be seen but I still wanted to put them there. And then I moved on to putting a railing around the hole. It was just a matter of cutting them to size after painting them, and then sanding 45 degree bevels onto the ends, and assembling them into the right shape to go around the opening in the floor. Then I glued them in place. And even without an interior, that hole in the floor was just bothering me. I couldn't leave it as it was. Next, we had decided to put gutters and downspouts on the building, as they're very prominent in all of the photos of it. Now it turns out that 1 8 inch plastruct works out very well for a six inch gutter on a no scale building. So it was just a matter of measuring and then using my ultimation slicer to cut all the correct angles. And then I glued together all of the pieces of channel to go around the building, making 45 degree angle miter cuts at all the corners. I wasn't attaching it to the roof yet. I was only gluing the gutter into itself. My plan was that after all the gutter were glued together into one piece, I could remove it off of the roof and paint it. 
and then I'd reattach it to the roof after that was done. So once it was dry, I painted it a medium gray. And then I used a pressure sensitive adhesive to attach it all the way around on the base of the roof. Another thing needed was a railing to go alongside those stairs. So I decided I'd build one out of plastic rod. I first measured my angles and then used a butane burner I have to see how easily that would bend the rod. Once I found that it worked pretty good, I made up a jig of all of the angles that I needed and then just put the styrene rod in it and bent it to fit the jig. I had drilled some holes in the hydrocal stairs, so I put the styrene in and along with a couple other uprights, glued it together and then painted it. The next step was to attach the structure to the base and I used tight bond glue for this. Now it was time to work on the downspouts. I was going to be using styrene tubing for this and I was able to cut it at all the angles that I would need but I wanted to have a strong way of gluing the pieces together. So I decided to use styrene rod and bend it at the proper angle and then put it inside the styrene tubing to hold the joints together securely. And this ended up being fairly easy. So I finished cutting all of my tubing and assembling all of my downspouts. And then once they were all glued together, I had to come up with a method to attach them to the building. I had all these little scraps of the channel left laying around, and they looked like they'd work perfect for attaching the downspout to the building. So I did some planning and testing with those, and then found the points where I'd want to attach them. Then I glued the brackets onto the downspouts, making sure they were at the right angle and that the downspouts would sit properly. Then I painted the downspouts the same color gray and was ready to mount them onto the building. But I had one problem I had to overcome. The roof was going to be removable and I had to make sure the downspouts lined up with the gutters every time the roof was replaced. So I came up with little fangs. I just took some of the styrene rod, carved it to a point, and glued them into the bottom of the gutters. And then once the downspouts were glued in place on the back of the building, the gutter would line up with those fangs every time the roof was put in place. So at that point I was ready to glue the downspouts onto the building and again I used a liquid PSA to hold them in place. Now it was time to actually glue the roof structure onto the roof base. And once it was glued in, then it was time to put the chimney in place. And I used a strong epoxy for this and making sure it was straight. I wanted to make sure it was on there solidly in case it ever got bumped. Then it was on to the final touches, like putting sealant around the chimney at the roof, and then starting to weather the building. I used my usual pigments for weathering the structure and the roof. And it wasn't getting a lot of weathering just some of the soot and dirt that would have built up over the years. And I also used some pastels and some oils 
to make rust stains on the stairs and on the gutters and downspouts. The steps won't actually be attached to the building until it's placed on the layout. So at this point I was done and ready to deliver it. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I built this wonderful kit and I appreciate you taking the time to watch.